we continue, uh, we've got why we uh, participate in exchange. Uh, we are incapable of producing all the things we desire. And at the same time, we have limited amount of time, energy, and resources. So that's why we specialize in exchange. And if we notice, there are really two uh, markets. There is factor market and product market. Do you know what we mean by a factor market? When Remember factors of production? Factors of production, you need to go to a factors market. It's a place where factors of production or resources are bought and sold. So if I go to the job market, is this a, a factor market or a product market? Factor. factor market. If I want to get uh, land to uh, grow tomatoes, that's a factor market because land is one of the factors of production. Okay. If I want tomatoes, I go to the product market. Product market is any place where finished goods and services products are brought and sold. Are you guys okay with this market? Now, if you go, if you say, let's say, Estramila Haria market, is it a product market or a factor market? It's a product. Okay, market. Now, if I want to go to a job fair to get a job, that's going to be a factor market. Are you guys okay with this? Okay. If I go to the bank, factor, because I will maybe able to get some investment. Now, uh, let's see, we've got here a product market, consumers buy and producers sell in uh, product markets. Import and exports are also part of a product market. Uh, government uh, supply goods and services in product markets. Okay. Now, how do you locate markets? This market is everywhere in economic exchange occur. And the market exists wherever and whenever an exchange takes place. So, uh, if you go to the stock market, is that a market? Yes, because there is exchange ownership. Okay. And you would have seen on the street, al akhwain li wa shara al, you know, al asum. Assume Yemen Mobile. Have you seen those? Yeah. Now here, the market is really, you know, you, you see the advertisement, you call them, you go to their office, there is a small market there. You can buy and sell. Uh, supply and demand. The two sides of each market uh, transaction are called supply and demand. So every time you go and you buy a tomato, there is some demand there and there is some supplier. And that's a market. And if you look at supply, it's the ability and willingness to sell, produce specific quantities of God at alternative prices in a given time period, citrus purpose. Are you guys okay with this? So one thing being, uh, other things being equal. That's what we mean by citrus purpose. Um, this is about your earlier example about the accolade. That's factor market, right? Yes. So that supplier, uh, supply is the ability and willingness to sell or produce. And remember the example we had for supply? What was it? Remember yesterday's example for supply? The babysitting. Remember babysitting, you supply services to babysit. And the demand is the ability and willingness to buy specific quantities of a good at alternative prices in a given time period such as purpose. Are you guys okay with the demand? Demand, it is my ability. I am able. It means I have money. And uh, willingness, so I want uh, to go buy a specific quantity of a good at alternative prices. So I go and I want to buy mangoes. Mangoes 200, 400, 800. If I'm able and willing to buy for 800 and 400 and for 200, that's going to be demand. And every market transaction involves an exchange, and thus some element of both supply and demand. Now, an individual demand, it's a demand exists only if someone is willing and able to pay for a good. So that's an individual, one person demand. Now, how much someone is willing to pay for something is determined by his or her income, plus opportunity cost. So I go, I buy tomatoes, how much is my income? So this tomato, do I have money? Okay, I will be able to buy tomato. And if I don't buy tomato, what else can I buy? Maybe the tomato example is not very easy, but let's say you're going to buy a home. 
or maybe you're going to buy a car. Now here, how much is your income to buy a home, to buy a car? How much is your alternatives? If I don't buy a car, what will I use the money for? So the opportunity cost becomes an important question. Opportunity cost is the most desired good or service foregone in order to obtain something else. Are you guys okay with this? Now, demand schedule. This is the demand schedule. Uh, it is the quantities of a good a consumer is willing and able to buy at alternative prices. That's, remember that line that is dropping down words, that's going to be the, the demand schedule. But of course, when we say a schedule, it means like numbers. So if I want to do this as a schedule, uh, I will say here, um, you know, if the price is uh, $1, people are going, uh, let's see if the price is $1, this is the demand, so people will buy 10 units, five units, one unit. So if this is the price, this is the quantity demanded. So if the price is one, uh, I want 10 kilos. If the price is five, I want five. If the price is 10, then I would like to buy one. So this is what we call the demand schedule. But you know, it's easier to do it like a car. Do you agree? Yes. No? You think the schedule is easier? No. You didn't understand the whole thing? Now, Remember the demand curve? We talked about, let's say, the mango. And we said the mango, uh, you know, if the price is uh, $1, you want to buy 10 kilos. So if the price is one, you buy 10 kilos. If the price is five, how many kilos you'll buy? Five. Five. So if it's got five, you buy five. If the price is 10, you buy one. Price 10, you buy one. You see, so this schedule is exactly like the curve. It represents the same information, but here it's on a gir uh, on a curve in a graph, while here it's more of a just a schedule. Yeah. So here is a table. So it's a table that shows the quantities of a good and uh, let's see, a good and consumers uh, is willing and able to buy at alternative prices in a given time period. Citrus purpose. Now everything else is the same. And then we've got demand is an expression of buyer intentions of a willingness to buy, not a statement of actual purchases. So this is just showing willingness. Okay, so this demand curve just to willingness. It's not actual. Are you guys okay with this? Yes. Now this is the demand curve. This is the curve, and uh, a curve, it describes the quantities of a good a consumer is willing and able to buy at alternative prices in a given time period, such as purpose. Same thing, it's just a curve. And here, uh, it shows you an example. So this is an example of a curve. Are you guys okay with this? So here, if the price is 10, how many do you uh, buy? 20. If the price is 50, how many you buy? One. One. And uh, if the price is 25? Nine. 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 You guys are okay with this? Yes. Now this is what we call the law of demand. The law of demand states that the quantity of a good demanded in a given time period increases as its price falls. Make sense? And there is an inverse or negative relationship between price and quantity demanded, such as purpose. We put such as purpose at the end of every statement, we put in economics. Now, what makes, the, what makes demand? What are the determinants of demand? Now, determinants of demand include tastes. So the question is, this is the demand. What is going to make this demand shift? Or what is going to influence the demand curve? Why is the demand curve is like this, not like this? Why is it here, not here? Now the question is taste, okay? And number two is people's income. And other goods, the availability and their price, the expectations, what do we expect in the future and the number of buyers? Are you guys okay with these?
Now let's take an example here. Let's say these days, uh, it is very fashionable for people to eat french fries with ketchup. And therefore, uh, it is becoming uh, uh, a lot of people demand tomatoes and a lot of people demand potatoes because it is very fashionable. All kids in the schools go eat french fries with ketchup and it is very fashionable. Let's say that, you know, some other intervention happened or it is no longer, or maybe Nancy Ajram decided to eat apple in the school. And then students decided they do no longer want french fries and ketchup. They start to buy more ketchup. Uh, sorry, start to buy more apples. Okay. So here, apples become more fashionable. So what's going to happen? You look at the apple business, you know, it will shift to the right, you know, when Nancy Ajram decides to. Okay. So that's, you know, how Nancy Ajram influences economics. And then we've got the idea of an income. If people income increase, then probably we're going to see uh, more demand. And of course, do everything increase demand when people income increase? If people income increase, do demand for everything increase? Not everything. Yeah, some products maybe, because when people are richer, they buy more, but they buy less of some other commodities. What are the things you buy less of when you become more rich? Like cheap things, uh, like uh, cheap low quality. something. Quality. Yeah. yeah, low quality second products. Hand, yeah, Remember like second hand products? You know, second hand products, when people income drop, more demand for second hand products. And then we got the idea of expectations. If you think in the future your income will increase, you start to spend now. And if you think that in the future Ramadan is coming and all the prices will increase, you know what, let's go buy now. And then you, the demand now happens because you think the future will happen. And also if you think that you know Ramadan is coming and more people will start to buy you know, the Ramadan stuff, so maybe now we go, we buy it, and you know what, it's nice, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people buy more dates, and you know, Sha'ban and Ramadan, kind of before Ramadan comes in. And then we've got the idea of such a purpose, the assumption of nothing else change. Uh, focus on one or two uh, fa uh, forces at a time, and assume nothing else will change. So, uh, so here is the idea of such a spare person definition. And it allows us to focus on the relationship between quantity demanded and price. And it tells us what independent, uh, what independent influences price has on consumption decisions. Are you guys okay with this idea of such a spare person? Yes. What about the advertisements? Okay. It tastes. Yeah. Advertising, it tastes. It tastes. So you do a lot of advertising, it will start to make people taste, become more inclined towards this. Attract attention. Yes. Are you guys okay with the citrus therapist concept? Break. If you're not okay with the... We take a break now? Yeah. All right, let's take a break and then come back.